Crossbar 1, or number 1 crossbar, was a switching system developed by the Bell system, first installed in the late 1930s. The last new Crossbar 1 prefix we knew about was in 1972. By 1990, they had all been retired. This presentation begins with a tape that Ben recorded in 1974 from his home phone in Bell Harbor, Queens, Neptune 4. And this office is a very good representative of the older sound of Crossbar 1. Now there's another type of Crossbar 1 register sender which gives a very different sound than this and where you can hear the outpulsing very clearly and I'll do that in a separate presentation. There were a lot of offices in Manhattan that had that newer sound. But this is the Crossbar 1 sound that we grew up with, so to speak. My hometown in Long Island had one of these too, although I had a new dial tone. And this tape was made while the wonder of the telephone network was still fresh for us. I'm going to splice in some material from later times, but only where that material is the same as it would have sounded at the time that he made these tapes. The reason being that some of the material he recorded wasn't of the same quality recording as we later made with a different recording method. You'll notice that the dial tone has a different pitch on certain calls. The higher pitch dial tone is correct, it's just that that day, his dial tone in Bell Harbor, the machine was running a little fast. Okay, this is Friday, May 24th, 1974, and we're going to do routings for my 634 cross by one exchange. Okay, we'll do, starting off, direct trunks to panel. Same marker group number one. A different number one. Five one six first, number one.
I'm sorry. The number you have reached is not in service or temporarily disconnected. The number you have reached is not in service at this time. This is a recording. Five one six crossbar five direct trunks. Direct trunk to a local ESS. Here's a call to a code that permanently goes to the overflow reorder. Information. Operator 919, may I help you? 555 information. Operator 602, may I help you? 611 repair. 811 business office. Crossbar 5 converts to step-by-step -step Sendrix. Alright, now we'll do some single tandem indirect calls. First to um, panel.
crossbar one. Crossbar five. Five one six first, crossbar five. Those two calls went through a tandem, but it was Hempstead. Hempstead likes to start putting the call through even before Ben's office finishes MFing the number. As a result, by the time Ben's office cuts through, Hempstead is cutting through just a second later and it almost sounds like it's not going through a tandem. That's called overlap outpulsing and certain crossbar tandems liked to do it. It would make the call go through faster but it could also increase the amount of time that registers and senders were held, so it was something they sort of had to use judiciously. These next two calls are going through Hempstead, too, and between the clicks of Ben's office cutting through, Hempstead cutting through, and the five-bar converting to the uh, number 101 ESS, 
You got a lot of different clicks on top of each other, and it takes a trained ear to sort them all out. The ESS Ben is about to refer to as a number 101 ESS Centrix, or PBX with DID. Then we have a 516 where uh, number 5 converts to ESS Centrix. Here's a case where Queen's Tandem, a crossbar tandem which Ben's office was using a lot during this time period, failed to get its call through. This routing pattern that was captured on this tape was a transitional one. Had this tape been recorded a few years earlier, we would have heard a lot more panel sender tandems. Had the tape been recorded a year later, we would have heard some new tandems that were installed in 1975. And actually, I will get to those in subsequent sections. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. Two one two three five. I'm sorry, your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. Two one two three five. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. If you whistled off a trunk to an ESS in those days, it would just do a soft tick 20 seconds later, and that's all she wrote. No recording, no reorder.
I'm sorry. Your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. To one, two, two, six. I'm sorry. Your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. To one, two, two, six. I'm sorry. Your call. <laughs> Cross by one. miscellaneous centrexes Thank uh... 
2004. When calling from Grumman Extensions, dial 3369 or 0 per operator. Thank you. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. For information when calling from outside Grumman, dial LR50574. When calling from Grumman Extensions, dial Most of the test tones in the phone network were generated electronically, but this last one was the older type. It's a rotating device that has to get up to speed before it reaches the nominal 1 kilohertz at 1 milliwatt. Now there were many Centrexes in New York, many of them had tones, but there was only one Centrex that had a tone system like this. Which one? Well, it was the one at the Sperry Gyroscope Company, of course. Think somebody at the phone company who set these things up might have had a sense of humor? I mean, when the only one in the whole downstate area that goes like this is at Sperry Gyroscopes, there's got to be a joke there. From this office to a Centrex tandem, which does not let you hear the pulses too well.
Five seven three two three two three. If you are inside, please dial zero for the Pfizer operator. The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. If you are calling from our side, you can reach our operator by dialing five seven three two three two three. If you are inside, please dial zero for the Pfizer operator. This is a recording. The number you have reached is not in service at this time. If you are calling from my side... This is a recording just for New York Life Insurance Company at 51 Madison Avenue. You have dialed direct to a disconnected line. Please call the main number 576-7000 for the new direct dial change. If you are inside, dial operator. Thank you for your cooperation. This is a recording just for... reached 340-3462 has been changed. The new number is 340-3000. Please make a note of it. At this point, the tape covers most of what Ben and I knew in May of 1974, though part of that I'll get to in the next segment. We can make some generalizations, for example, from a crossbar one office like Ben's, if it's going through on a direct trunk, you'll hear the ring start right after the first set of loud clicks, like this. When it's going through a single crossbar tandem like the ones we've heard, it can sound like this. Some crossbar tandems like Hempstead overlap out pulse, and therefore it can sound like this. Calls that go over direct trunks from an office with older senders like Ben's always use revertive pulsing, though it can be very difficult to hear.
Calls made at night or calls within the same building usually do let you hear the revertive pulsing. Did you notice that Ben's office was overlap out pulsing? That is, it was letting revertive digits go even before he dialed the complete number. Crossbar 1s always do that on RP, but never on MF or PCI. When a call is going through one or more crossbar tandems, you can sometimes hear the crossbar tandem or tandems out pulsing. To a crossbar 1 or 5 office, and by the way to an ESS office too, it can be either revertive pulse. or MF. But to a panel, it's always revertive pulse, and the panel revertive pulsing has a definite rhythm to it. Revertive pulsing to number five crossbar generally is faster than revertive pulsing to number one crossbar. Most of the Centrexes in New York City at this time are step PBXs with DID and are in special prefixes that go to crossbar tandems, not regular end offices. Often you can hear the crossbar tandem dial pulsing to the PBX. In the rare case where a step Centrex is homed on a crossbar 5, you can hear the line link pulsing arrangement being picked up by some distinct clicks. But the crossbar 5 never lets you hear the dial pulsing. When a number 101 ESS PBX is homed on a crossbar 5, you can hear some other distinct clicks as the call goes through very quickly. We have reached the non-working number associated with Nassau County Parks and Jail. Salisbury Park and the Nassau County Jail do share the same Centrex. Perhaps that's because Salisbury Park was so ugly that they thought, hey, what the heck? On all of the calls through crossbar tandems, which we've heard so far, Ben's office either MFs the seven-digit or ten-digit number, or PCI's the seven-digit number. PCI is a DC signaling protocol developed for manual switchboards. It's very hard to tell whether Ben's office is MFing or PCIing. That was PCI. That was MF. But MF more often sounds like this. And PCI most often sounds like this. As you can see, it's difficult to tell those two apart, at least from this perspective. Obviously, if you were listening to the trunk, though, MF would go beep, 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 and PCI would go click, 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 click. Now, as subtle and as complex as this sounds, this is only the surface, because this is a transitional routing pattern that really only emerged in the 1970s. Prior to this time, there were a lot of panel tandems in the network, and there were also crossbar tandems that were used in a more subtle way that you couldn't quite hear as clearly as the way you're hearing them used here. So this is a primer on routing in the mid-1970s. Cool stuff, but this is not the original routing pattern. In the next segment of routings from 634, I'll cover the earlier way that calls were routed in New York City, some of which existed at the time this tape was made as well and continued to exist throughout the 1970s and even early 80s but the panel tandems that made up that system were being retired even as this tape was being made.